Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Oviedo City Council meeting. It is Monday, October 21st, 2013. It's a little bit after 6.30. We have all members of council present this evening. We also have a Girl Scout troop in the audience, and I did not get the troop number. Can somebody yell it out to me? I'm sorry? 4054. Ladies, can you come on up to the podium? And help us with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <coughs> now that microphone is on, so you can kind of pull it down a little bit towards you once you get up there. If everybody can please rise. <coughs> Ladies, the flag is right there. I'm going to turn it over to you, and when you're ready, okay? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now that was enthusiastic. Wait, wait, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We discussed this. I want you each to introduce yourself, tell us what school you go to, and why you're here tonight. My name is Savannah, and I go to Carolina Elementary, and I'm here to earn a badge. Good for you. Welcome, Savannah. My name is Emma Haddad, and I am here to, and I go to Carolina Elementary just like her, and I'm here to earn a badge. My name is Magna, and I'm, I go to Carolina Elementary, and I'm here to earn a badge about the government. Good for you. My name is <coughs> Julia, and I'm here to, I go to Carolina Elementary, and I'm here to earn a badge about the government. Hi, my name is Madeline Dowda. I go to Carillon Elementary, and I'm here to earn a government badge. Well, welcome, ladies, and thank you for coming. Let's give them a round of applause. Tell them they can go later on the Internet. Tell them they can go later on the Internet. Later on, you, you, know, you can all go on the Internet tomorrow, Barbara, or the day after? Uh, tomorrow, you can go to the cityofobito.net and you can actually see this being played back. The video will be up there and you can see yourselves on TV, okay? Good job, ladies. Chief White, would you mind? My name's Lars White and I'm ready to retire my badge. <laughs> Chief, you're not allowed to ever retire. We've had this discussion. <laughs> if you'd like to join me in prayer, please do so at this time. Father God, we thank you for the rain that you're, you're sending us over the next few days to, to our parched lands. Lord, we thank you for these Girl Scouts in attendance and family and friends and ask for blessings on them, good health as our future leaders. Father God, we pray for our elected officials and that you grant them wisdom in the decisions they make. We pray for our president, for our con congressional leaders. We pray for our military. Father God, tonight we dedicate and pray on behalf of our new city manager, Brian Cobb and his family, that you would bless this family, give them good health, and give him a long term in office. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> our first order of business is the oath of office for our new city manager. Council, can you come join me down in front of the dais? Mr. Cobb and your family. And I see a family Bible, I believe.
Alrighty, our next order of business is a ceremonial item, and it is Seminole County Students Working Against Tobacco Youth Presentation. I saw a whole bunch of folks come in. Why don't you all come on up? <clears throat> Introduce yourselves, and do we have a PowerPoint, or Linda's got something? Okay, we'll get a second. We'll get it all queued up over there. Why don't you give us a brief introduction, introduce everybody who's with you, tell us why you're here, where you're from. And All right, well, good evening, everybody. My name is Shirley Castillo. I am the Youth Advocacy Board Statewide Parliamentarian, as well as the Region 3 representative, which constitutes the upper half of Central Florida. I'm here today with Natalie Castillo, Nick Walterhouse, and Logan Saucer from Lake Mary High School, as well as Victoria Galvan from Seminole High School. We represent students working against tobacco, as well as the Tobacco Free Partnership. We're here to, ed to educate the council makers on the benefits of adopting a flavored tobacco, uh, a ban, adopting a resolution that bans the sale and mar marketing of flavored tobacco to our city's youth. Does this work? Oh, okay, awesome. SWAT is Florida's statewide youth organization working to mobilize, educate, and equip Florida's youth to re revolt against and de-glamorize big tobacco. SWAT is a united movement of empowered youth working towards a tobacco-free future. In 2008, the total amount of Floridians that died from smoking and tobacco-related diseases cost the state of Florida an estimated $9.6 in health care costs and lost productivity. Most adults don't even remember seeing flavored tobacco or recalling what the product is, but it's everywhere, and it's marketed primarily towards children. The most common products that are flavored tobacco are um, seen, commonly seen in Seminole County are cigars, cigarillos, snus, Smokeless, which includes dip and chewing, orbs, strips, sticks, hookahs, and wraps. The results for Seminole County in the Florida Youth Tobacco Survey results indicated that 7.1% of middle school students and 15.8% high school students have used tobacco in one or more of the past 30 days. 7.4% middle school students and 21.7% high school students have tried flavored tobacco products at least once. Now think about how many students are within the ages of high school range, so around 14 through like 18, in Seminole County alone. 21.7% is really close to 25.7%, and that's one-fourth. One-fourth out of every student in high school has tried a flavored tobacco product at least once. Now keep in mind that flavored tobacco products contain the same amount of nicotine and addictive properties as any other tobacco product. So the chances of them being hooked from their first try is extremely significant. On June 22, 2009, when the tobacco companies were banned from selling flavored cigarettes, they began to make many other tobacco products flavored, although they deny that they're targeting children. However, children are the main consumers of similar sweet products. Flavored tobacco is just as bad as any other tobacco product. Tobacco companies still make sweet-flavored cigars, cigarillos, snus, smokeless, dip or chewing, orbs, strips, sticks, hookahs, and wraps. There has been research done by the Harvard School of Public Health have found that big tobacco companies are not trying to cover or mask the harsh toxic, including vanilla, cherry, grapes, chocolate, etc. <laughs> 
For example, sweetness can impart a different delivery taste dimension to which young to which younger children may be receptive as evidence to taste one and other products areas. Children are more likely to taste these products due to sweet flavoring tobacco companies use that logic than the advertisement and production of flavored tobacco. The tobacco industry uses bright colors, catchy slogans, and childish themes to attract the attention of the youth that they're trying to sell the tobacco to. Some brands utilize masculine packaging, which is geared towards boys to make them seem more sophisticated or older. And a statistic that goes with this um, information is the fact that more than half of high school males and nearly a third of high school females have used more than one tobacco product in their high school career. Flavored tobacco wrappers, they look and feel the same as regular wrappers. And the fruity packaging designs are also geared towards the youth so that they are attracted to buy these products. And many retailers place these products at kid's eye level, and many of these products cost less than a dollar, which is less than the going rate for candy nowadays in most stores. Next. Chewing tobacco tins are very similar to mint tins, and they also look very similar to chewing bubble gum tins that you can buy in stores. In 2009, Snus came onto the market and is a spitless tobacco product which is available in many different flavors. And it is, takes the form of a dip and is very similar to a tea pouch. It's about the size of a cell phone or a mint package. Next. All of these products are being marketed by tobacco companies and have similar characteristics of sweets. And they're being marketed to counteract the Clean Indoor Air Act, which basically states that smoking is prohibited within buildings. This is known as a hookah. How many of you are familiar with that? Okay. Do you guys know how it works and how it functions? All right. Good. So, <laughs> yes, I have to make sure you're familiar with it. But I'm going to give you some background history on it. The hookah, also known as the water pipe, originated in the Middle East, specifically in Persia and India in the 1800s. It was seen as just a typical thing that people do when they went home, just to relax and so forth. It wasn't seen as bad or harmful at all. It soon migrated to the United States, and now we have at least 100% of retail outlets in Seminole County sell at least one form of flavored tobacco products and adverse advertise at least one form. That's an awful lot. Now, these hookahs, they seem harmless, but they're actually not. A typical one-hour smoking session of a hookah gives you 100 to 200 times the amount of nicotine in a traditional cigarette. And it's obviously exposing, exposed to our youth. As you can see, there's an Alice in Wonderland caterpillar. I grew up on that. I'm pretty sure if any of you have children, a lot of them did too. We're being exposed. Next slide, please. This is a map taken in April of 2011. And it's when SWAT was first starting out passing resolutions in Florida. We only had 19. Next slide, please. Now, this was taken in 2013. Actually, in September 25th. OK, you can't see the map anymore. But we have over. <laughs> It's okay, I can continue. Okay. We have over 200 city and county resolutions. We have had success in other counties in the past as well, in Seminole County. And I would love for Oviedo to be the next. Okay, so what you see here is a collage to show the similarity of tobacco products and sweet products on the market today, such as Sour Patch, Airheads, and Chewing Gum. If it's hard for you to discern the difference between these products, how would the average youth? They wouldn't, especially during a rush trip to the convenience store, which happens to be a strategically placed near schools all the time. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the best way to decrease tobacco use is to change social norms about tobacco. We can do this by passing policies that make tobacco less acceptable, accessible, and desirable. Changing tobacco norms in our county may take time, but it can start right here with some basic knowledge and skills we need to mobilize in our community. We hope the information presented today compels a city resolution to ban the sale of flavored tobacco to pass in Oviedo. And what you see here is a list of the uh, cities where it's 
the resolution has already been passed. We have Lake Mary, Castleberry, Sanford. And actually, um, Longwood just passed it as well. We don't have this slide updated. And Altamont Springs is our only pending one. <clears throat> I've recently become a resident of Oviedo. It would be a tragedy to see the small town feel and friendly atmosphere that I was welcomed with be ruined by the malevolent proliferation of flavored tobacco. Thank you for your time and attention in this very important matter. By working together, we can protect the youth and prevent the next generation from becoming tobacco users here in Seminole County. We do. Do you have a resolution for us? Is there a template of it? There is. Um, you guys should have been furnished with one. If, if not already, you will soon. Could you follow up with one? Yes. Yeah. Did you send this one? And why don't you all just introduce yourselves. Tell us what school you go to. I heard Lake Mary, Lake Mary, Lake Mary, and a Seminole. Seminole? Yeah. Introduce yourself, son. Okay, yeah. Um, my name is Logan Saucer. I go to Lake Mary High School, but I'm a resident of Oviedo. What grade are you in? Senior. Senior? Mm -hmm. My name is Nicholas Walterhouse, and I'm a senior at Lake Mary High School. Great. My name is Natalie Castillo, and I'm a freshman at Lake Mary High School. My name is Shirley Castillo, and I'm a senior at Lake Mary High School. My name is Victoria Galvan, and I'm a pre-IB sophomore at Seminole High School. Well, guys, that was a very impressive uh, mm -hmm. presentation. We want to thank you for it. Council, do you have any comments for me? I'd just like to thank you for bringing this to our attention. Um, I can, I'm embarrassed to say that I have been heard of this. And actually, I'm rather appalled that it's the way it's targeted towards children and with the whole idea of getting them hooked on tobacco, which we, has been proven to be a killer. That, that's all it does to you is, in the, in the end, it kills you. So thank you for bringing this and bringing it to my attention. Um, I appreciate your dedication and your commitment to this cause. Keep it up. Councilman Shank, do you have any words for us? Uh, yeah, I think the presentation was great. You guys show great enthusiasm. Is there a, is there a, are you guys as the organization looking for a statewide ban? Because uh, you, you have the state pretty well covered, it looks like. Are you looking, is that also a, something that you're looking to do as the legislature? Well, eventually, yes, we hope to um, achieve a statewide ban. However, we found that by going locally, mm -hmm. it raises the tension a lot more than what we get Thank you. Great job. Mm -hmm. Councilman Britton? Great job. Uh, this is old news as far as uh, tobacco companies uh, targeting kids. We've been going through this uh, for, for years now, so uh, good job on bringing it out. Deputy Mayor? You know, it's really, it's really good what you said, that uh, you, you, you like to work locally because you're getting more of a, an impact, which is so true, because sometimes the bigger the government gets, the deafer it gets, you know, and like we always say, the government that's closest to the people affects the people the most. So you guys are doing a great job. I will tell you, <clears throat> you know, these hookahs and all these things that kids are doing, most kids your age, so I have kids your age, they think this is all good and that there is no problem. A lot of them don't realize that, and you pointed out, how it has so much more nicotine than cigarettes. Oh, well, I wasn't smoking. It was, it was a hookah pipe or something. So it's really great that you guys are bringing this. You should be proud of yourselves. Parents should be proud of their, their kids, so it's a good cause, and, you know, if we can help you, we'll be there for you. Good job. Well, guys, it sounds like you have consensus <clears throat> to send us a resolution. If uh, you could please just email it over to the clerk's office, and uh, we will get it on the soonest agenda that we can, and once it's passed, we will let you know. And just a quick so question, much. guys. Did you, I didn't see, did I miss Winter Springs up there? Have you gone to the city of Winter Springs? I saw everybody That's but the them. You're going to go stop at Winter Springs, too. Okay. And, and for all the parents out there, as we mentioned earlier, this meeting will be up on cityofobito.net tomorrow. So you'll be able to go up there in the afternoon. The video is there. There will be a button right to the agenda item. And you guys can lift the video if you want and use it however you like. So thank you so much for coming out. Great job. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Oh, sure, of course. Council, why don't you join us down the front?
I what, what, what can I throw a lot of this? All righty, moving right along, we're up to item number three, which is the approval of the minutes for the meeting of September 30th, 2013, which was a work session, and our regular meeting of October 7th, uh, 2013. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Councilman Britton? No. Nope. Councilwoman? No. Nope. Anybody else? No. Nope. Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, it is now our public <laughs> comment portion of our meeting. I do have one written request. This seems to be for item 15, though, so I will hold it. Is there anybody in the audience, though, who would like to address council? on any item that's not on our agenda this evening. No takers? All righty, we'll close public comment. We'll move on to the consent agenda. What is the pleasure of council for items five through 14? Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Second. We have a motion and I think uh, Councilman Britton just beat you. And a second. Deputy Mayor, do you have anything? Nope, everything was, uh, looks good. Councilman Britton? Good. Councilwoman? No, good. Councilman Shank? I uh, pull 13, please. Do you have a question on it or do you want to pull it? Okay. Make it 13A. Motioner and seconder agree? For sure. Motion on the table is to adopt item 5 through 12 and item 14. Item 13 will be 13A. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 13, resolution number 2751-13, additional street pavers for Oviedo on the park. Mr. Cobb, can you give us a brief introduction? Thank you, Mayor. This is a request for City Council to approve an additional expenditure of $50,000 for roadway pavers in Oviedo on the park. The city staff was approached by Pack Land Development regarding a hardscape enhancement opportunity in Oviedo on the park. The current design for City Plaza Way includes asphalt on the travel lanes and the parking lanes, except at the intersection of Michael Way and the two crosswalks, which are to be connected by brick pavers. The idea is that the extra $50,000 will be used to provide additional brick pavers within the parking aisles along um, Center Lake Lane. And what that will do, it will create an enhancement. We already have the brick at the intersections, and this will continue that on within the parking areas up to, from Mitchell Hammock Road up to the circle. And then, but you'll still have the asphalt in the middle for the, different, for the travel lanes. Uh, a budget amendment is provided uh, with resolution number 2751-13. It shows how the funds will be moved from the different accounts to fund this improvement. Uh, it is recommended that uh, City Council adopt <coughs> resolution number 2551-13. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Councilman Shank, you pulled it, so why don't I give you a moment, and then we'll get a motion. Um, well, basically, just even what you said, yeah, additional money. I, I think I, I, I like the idea of it. It's nice, but we keep, I'm going to say, adding on. Um, we keep creeping this, uh, what we're doing, the, the price keeps creeping up and up and up. Um, I think we looked at the budget this year, and there were a lot of deficits in our budget in terms of people and other things that we were looking to have this year. And I think, it's again, it's about choices and taking that money and instead using it for other things rather than putting it into the parking lot, into the parking spaces, and putting the pavers there. I think the design's been there. We like the design for many years. It's nice. We can keep adding to the design that we currently have. We can always look at more and say more is better because it is. If we want to keep enhancing it, we can do that. Um, but I think we have to draw the line somewhere and say, <clears throat> uh, this is an enhancement that's not necessary. It's nice to have. Uh, 
but we've been looking at design for a long time this way. Um, if the developer wants to do it, God bless. Um, that's his, but I think we can use that money uh, somewhere else internally. Okay. Can I get a motion? Well, let's we want a motion and discuss? Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, resolution as submitted. A motion? Can I get a second? Second. A motion and a second. Councilman Brittany, you have the floor. Uh, Brian, are these are these funds part of the original uh, budget uh, that was approved by the voters? Uh, yes, sir. We had some savings left over from last year, and so we're able to take those those savings and apply them for this. From last expense. year, from the uh, from the uh, bond uh, yes, that was approved. Okay, could could that money be used for other things? We would have to use it as far as within a veto on the park. Okay, and do we have a uh, uh, what I call a maximum liability for the project. How much money do we have and how much have we spent and how much is left in <coughs> contingency? Well, obviously we have $8 million, $8.5 million. That's the budget. Yeah, the budget. <laughs> what, how much of that has been obligated? Uh, we've obligated $5.5 million. Okay. So this... This for, for this part of it. This is for the infrastructure part of it. Yeah. Five point five million was obligated for that. Okay. So this money is available is I yes, guess the, the point. And and it's coming out of uh, uh, the funds that were approved for the project. Yes, sir. It's coming out of the downtown improvement fund. Okay. All right, that's all I got. Thank you. Right. Who was my second? I think it was Councilwoman. That was me. Yep. Do you have anything, Councilwoman? Um just that I, I'm I, I'm guessing correct me if I'm wrong, that it would cost a lot more later on down the line if we had to go back in and tear up the pavement and put brick pavers down. Is that correct? It's better to do it right now while we're putting in the infrastructure and there's nothing there. My yes, ma'am. Okay. That's all I have. Deputy Mayor? Well, I just want to uh, commend Councilman Schenck. I mean, you know, the, the, the intent there to save this money and maybe use it for an employee or, or uh, some thing that we might have cut through the years was certainly a, a good thing to think about, but being that it can only be used in the downtown, um, you know, we're only going to build this downtown one time, so the better it looks um, now, it would be fine, but I, I think it was a good good observation, but, you know, my vote might have been a little different if you could have used it for employees, but you can't, so on we go. Great. Um, well, I, I would support it. I mean, the original plan, if, if everyone remembers, was uh, Oviedo Boulevard or what it was called, Oviedo Way and Oviedo Circle. They, they were originally all brick, 100% on the, the original plan. And through the planning process, we took out some of the brick, made them asphalt uh, on the drives because it's much easier maintenance for public works later on, and we added the brick intersections, the brick planters, uh, a whole bunch of different brick accents throughout it. So if we could add a little bit of that back on the parking areas, as uh, Deputy Mayor said, we, we only build this thing once. And, uh, you know, we, we promised a vision. We promised uh, hardscape throughout the park. And uh, if you go out there now and you take a tour or you go walk around, you can really see it starting to gel and starting to come together. The, the, the vision that we've all been looking at for the last 10 years is, is taking shape out there. So, yes, I, I understand it is uh, more money being spent, but uh, in the, the scheme of the project, it's not that much more money being spent, and it's certainly going to add to the aesthetics as we, <coughs> we go down the road. So I, I certainly would support is there anything else from anyone? Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd just like to point out that, uh, as the city manager said, there, there is a fixed amount of money that was approved for this project. Uh, we can make these decisions, and, and I, I still mm -hmm. agree with this. I, that's what uh, is being recommended. But when that money's gone, it's gone. So I want to well, make sure, Brian, that you guys are, are tracking every dime of that and understanding, uh, making the, the, the decisions on, on where those trades come from and what we use it for. Well, if I can say also, that's, I use the example of the employees, but, you know, we've taken out money for the amphitheater and other things, too. So that, that's just my point is we've already taken out loans for amphitheater. We're doing other things. 
And as we keep going on, we may want to keep adding. It just, it, it seems to be we're increasing, increasing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a great point. Mm -hmm. All righty, is there anything else? Motion on the table is to approve. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Four to one. Motion carries. Moving on, we're up to our public hearing portion. We're up to item number 15, which is ordinance number 1565. It is the zoning map amendment for the Maitland Fruit Company, Incorporated, and others. Mr. Cobb, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Well, this is a request to amend the city's official zoning map to change the zoning district of approximately 35.14 acres from Seminole County Ag Agricultural A1 to City of Avito Residential R1A and City of Avito Residential R1A to City Residential R1. Uh, the property is located on the west and east side of Lee Avenue, approximately 100 feet uh, north of the intersection of Lee Avenue and Geneva Road. The City Council conducted first reading of this ordinance on its, at its May 20th, 2013 meeting. The purpose of the zoning map amendment is to change the existing Seminole County and City Residential Zoning Districts to the City R1 Zoning District for the entire property. Uh, the subject request has been reviewed and has been found to be compatible with the City's comprehensive plan. The proposed R1 zoning district is compatible with the, with the property's low density residential future land use designation and it is also compatible with the surrounding zoning de designations in the area. Um, the City Council tonight is asked to read the ordinance by title only, conduct a public hearing, and adopt ordinance number 1565. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Will the City Attorney please read ordinance number 1565 by title only? <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Nix. Uh, is the applicant here? Drew, if we can. Have we seen it all? We've all seen it. We probably have it in the package. Can we just put it out on the corner so the audience can see it? Thank you, guys. Good evening. Travis Rent, 700 West Morse Boulevard, Suite 101, Winter Park, Florida, 32789. I'm here on behalf of the applicants tonight requesting approval to ordinance 1565, approving, approving the change in zoning from uh, agriculture and R1A to R1. Um, all of you have received prior to tonight's hearing a copy of the memorandum prepared by staff along with the support data and analysis. Um, I'm going to give you guys the option tonight a little different. I'm, I'm happy to go over the highlights of the support memorandum and we can look at the plan and go through the uh, kind of what, what we're changing and what we're doing here. Um, or if uh, you know staff did an excellent job of going through the, the reasons why the requested change that we're asking for tonight is consistent with the comp plan and consistent with the adjacent uses and consistent with the city code. So based upon those reasons, we feel comfortable that this council um, should approve ordinance 1565 and change the, the zoning for this property. All righty. What is the pleasure of council? Do we want a full presentation or we want to see if we have any comments? Councilman Brayton, do you have any questions? This, this is a lot of deja vu to me. I've seen <laughs> so I guess everyone's comfortable at this point. We'll see if we have any comments from the audience that need to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, this is a public hearing. I will open it up. Uh, 
Mr. Melville, are you here? Uh, <clears throat> sir, I do apologize if I made an error. I see up at the top we have written that you wanted to speak on item 15, but I also see that you were for item 12. Just so. 12, only 12 on the All consent right. agenda. Okay. Right. So I, I do apologize. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to make a comment on item 12, it's already passed. You were for it, so. Uh, oh, what's that? You were... Item 12 did pass. Oh, it did. It okay. was in then consent, I and I do apologize. Yeah. You wrote item 12. Up at the top, they wrote item 15, so I held it for no item problem. 15. No um, problem. Just to state my name and address for the record, Drew uh, Melville from the Vieira Company. Uh, address is uh, <clears throat> 7380 Urel Road, Suite 201, Melbourne, Florida. And I uh, just want to thank you all and uh, appreciate your understanding of the situation. You're welcome. And again, I, I do apologize for the uh, misreading. That's, that's right. All righty, we do have the public hearing portion opened up on ordinance number 1565. I do not have any written requests. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to address council at this time? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Schenck. Make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1565. Second. Second. Councilwoman Beecher that time. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Schenck, you have the floor. Uh, no questions. Uh, it's first. Uh, Councilman Burton said we've a little deja vu. We've seen this a little bit, so. Mm -hmm. Bye. Councilwoman? No, I, I met with them and researched it, and I'm good with it. Okay. Councilman Britton, still the uh, same? Still the same. The rendering of the uh, of the neighborhood layout looks very good to me. All righty. Good. Good. Travis, I just have one question. I know you made a, a, a couple of improvements to the entranceway feature. Can you just point those out? Sure. Um, you can kind of swing that back towards us. Okay. <laughs> I know you squared it off and you have uh, landscaping going in now. Right. That's what we're anticipating in this moment. Mm -hmm. um, currently, as, as we've had some discussions with council, uh, unfortunately, we found when we started helping this project, there were some issues that when the Alabama subdivision was developed prior to time, it was, it was built off this proposed location. So we found a pinch point um, in the right of way, which has caused uh, our client to go out and uh, look for some additional land in order to improve the right of way, get what we think is a, is a great interest. Next step in the process. Correct. Great. Well, thank you, Travis. I appreciate you pointing that out to everyone. Does council have any other questions for the applicant? Mm. Mr. Cobb, anything from staff? No, sir. We recommend adoption. Travis, anything else for us? No, I, I just want to appreciate you all for your time. You know, this, this has been a work in progress. Um, we think we have a great plan now that kind of meets the sentiments of council, and, and council speaks for, the, for, for their constituents. And at uh, the end of the day, we, we appreciate your time, consideration, and, and the input. Thank you, Travis. Motion on the table is to adopt Ordinance 1565. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Guys, go build a nice subdivision. Mm -hmm. Moving along, we're up to item number 16. It is Ordinance number 1572, Amendments to the Land Development Code, Article 6, Section 6.4, and Table 6.16. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. This is a request for City Council to adopt amendments to the Land Development Code, Article 6, Downtown Mixed Use Regulations, specifically to Section 6.40 table and Table 6.16 relating to signs in the new downtown development and redevelopment districts. Florida statutes requires that the local governing body hold two public hearings for any type of Land Development Code amendment. Uh, this is the second of the required public hearings. You conducted your first public hearing at your last meeting. During the review of, a, of the residential project known as the Hamptons, which is the townhome project for Oviedo in the park, staff encountered a situation where they were not able to provide signage for the project. Uh, the new downtown village core district and the new downtown zoning district 
did not allow for residential signage, almost like subdivision signs, which you find in any normal residential neighborhood. Um, table 6.16 governs signs, and it does not address freestanding signs for residential neighborhoods. So the staff went about working with the applicant to come up with a plan to revise the code to provide for those types of signs. Uh, they also started to, in looking at the, uh, the regulations, they also encountered that, uh, and some of the things that we learned through the development of Oviedo on the Park, that uh, certain temporary signs, such as construction signs and real estate signs and other types of temporary signs were also not provided for. In the, land in the Land Development Code, specifically uh, Table 6.16. And so they brought forth an ordinance that addresses those, those issues and it incorporates uh, standards to allow for primary entrance signs to uh, residential developments in the new downtown development districts. Uh, it revises uh, the language for temporary signs, incorporating standards to allow additional temporary signs, such as construction signs, grand opening signs, homeowner association signs, A-frames, free speech signs, real estate signs, those residential event signs. It removes requirements for sign illumination and neon lighting that are not feasible to enforce. It also removes uh, a section of the prohibited sign elements to maintain consistency with uh, Article 14, which, which is the, the other sign code within the Land Development Code. And it also incorporates a number of recommendations that were uh, recommended by the Development Review Committee, which are provided uh, in, your, in your memorandum. Um, the Development Review Committee recommends adoption, as well as the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board. The City Attorney has reviewed the ordinance and has no legal objections. It's recommended that City Council read the ordinance by title, conduct a public hearing, and adopt Ordinance Number 1572. Ms. Fruitt and Ms. Pierre are here should you have any questions on the details of the ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Ms. Next, can you read Ordinance Number 1572 by title only, please? Thank you. Ordinance Number 1572, an ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, relating to the regulation of signs, amending subsection 6.40, including Table 6.16, Article 6, Downtown Mixed Use District, Land Development Code of the City of Oviedo, relating to new downtown development and redevelopment districts, sign standards, providing for legislative findings and intent, providing for Thank you very much. <clears throat> this is a public hearing. I will open it up. I have no written request. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council on ordinance number 1572? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Schenck. Make motion to adopt ordinance 1572. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Schenck, you have the floor. Um, just two quick, uh, they're just little questions or throw some things out. On the real estate signs, um, section H. Um, so it's maximum area 16 square feet, so basically four by four, essentially. Um, and then six signs, six square feet are maybe, maybe require, don't require issuance of permits. You kind of explain your thoughts on that, because I'm, I'm just kind of, so if we've got, that, that's throughout the entire new downtown district, correct? Yes, sir. So that would be in the urban core, I'm going to say. In, in the downtown itself, there could be a four by four, and then six Three by twos or throughout. I just think that's a lot of signage because then I go to the next one and say campaign signs are four by four also. And thinking, I'm, I'm just going to say uh, a four by four sign sitting in front of all those nice, multiple four by fours sitting in front of all those nice, uh, hopefully, urban style buildings that we're looking to build planted throughout. I, I think those are rather large to be sitting in that area specifically. I know as you go outside or spread outside the downtown, you know, it's not just that little core area. Um, it goes to the historic downtown too, doesn't it, we're talking about? 
Uh, no, sir. This it will just, just this will just, just be the it. new downtown village core and the new downtown. Yeah, district. I, I, I think it's just both of those are. They seem large to me, and and I, I don't know. Six lines seems like a lot for. I'm going to say. Uh, <coughs> is that per for the six signs? That would be like let's say. For for townhomes, one townhome, or for the whole development. Six signs would be the six square foot signs are basically the reason that we six square foot signs are exempt from okay. permitting throughout the city. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, and, and with this, this is a real estate sign. So, if for the townhomes, this would be a maximum six square foot sign for each townhome, saying that is for sale or for lease. So, for each townhome, they have six. They could have a six, six square foot sign. Most one of the time, yes, sir. For each one, uh, the four by fours are basically your subdivision sign. That's that's the one that they would be using for their leasing office or at their model center. They would have a four by four sign there. Uh, that's more for a project basis. That's why it requires the permit. Uh, but the individual ones, it, it, and it all gets back once again. We don't require individual homeowners who are, have their house for sale to get a a so, permit for their real estate. I, I, I'm sorry, I, you know what, I, I see that now that I'm reading it, it just jumps out that it's a sign six square feet, and I keep reading I can get six signs out of that. Oh, okay. And I, that was yes, the No, it's just one sign. And I'm, I have to read the whole read real estate signs, one non illuminated signs for it should comply with the following. It's either one of one or number one or two applies. Correct. It's either one, th six feet, gotcha. Um, I still. Four by four, I, I can understand for the, again, and this is, I, I'm thinking of when it's built at. Yes, sir. And I look at that 16 square foot and go, when it's built, I think the 16 square foot, and I especially think for the campaign free speech signs, it's a 16 square foot, a four by four is large within that area. That would just be my concern is that those. Right. Council, would you like to see that um, uh, I'd maybe, a, maybe a change to only during construction and once built out? Uh, is there something maybe that you'd well, like don't to address? We have, with yeah, we have maybe for the for that 16 square foot for the real estate sign or negative construction. Cons don't we have a construction? What are they allowed to do during construction? Or don't we have that already? Uh, yes, sir. We did provide, uh, we do have provisions for construction signs. Uh, that is in... Because uh, that's why I thought we had that. So I really think we can just, you know, Maybe then go to a couple of six square footers versus again having a four by four sign up there is just a lot of real estate. Mm -hmm. Going to be sitting at eye level, blocking whoever is living next door in that or on that walkway or whatever it is. I know it's going to have setbacks and all that, but I, I just see four by fours as rather large um, put throughout there. And again, I think the campaign signs, same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I look for more. Taking that real estate section H and changing that to a maximum of two six square foot signs instead and getting rid of the 16 square foot uh, entirely. And just uh, campaign signs. I, they're permitted anyway. I, I'm going to have to say they're permitted anyway. I would just reduce the size and say I wouldn't go 16 square feet with them either. And just say, you know. Uh, you know, you're going to get the free speech thing, so I'll go however, however many six square foot seems reasonable, but um, on the person's property, I would say one per property would be a fine or whatever, but I, I would try to look for something like that. That would be my suggestion. Those two just jumped at the size of those signs being in that, because you can get them during construction, you can get them for, you know, some other 17th day special event things, grand openings, all these other things. But I'm looking for when it's done, having these four-foot signs possibly popping up on resale for townhomes, et cetera. It just seems large to me. Mr. But Cobb, is, is the intent for the real estate signs only during construction or when there's an empty parcel that a real estate sign, a commercial sign, has to be on at 4 by 4 Or, as Councilman Schenck is saying, will this continue on uh, in perpetuity? For the zoning district until this ordinance is changed once again, it's it's uh, the only one that's tied to construction is the construction sign. The real estate signs are any time that this property is up for sale. 
Most of the time, the 4 by 4s the 16 square feet signs, are used for commercial tracks. They're not generally used on the residential tracks. If you do, you find them while the subdivision's under construction, and once it's done, they're taken down. But uh, the commercial tracks is where you usually find the 4 by 4 signs. And on that, of course, we obviously put in there for the real estate signs for the individual lots being the 6 square feet. So. But, Brian, somebody could put a 4x4 um, four four on a resale of the townhome if they wanted to if we approved this, couldn't they? They would have to get a permit for it. Right, but they could do it. That, that, the question is, if can they, they can meet, Yes, if they can meet the setbacks and... Because, you know, yeah. I mean, you, 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 try to, you try to play chess and be visionary. I mean, you could imagine if there was, you know, 20, 20 of them for sale, very close. You've got these humongous signs blocking people's windows, the Councilman Shank pointed out, eye level. Mm -hmm. You know, so why don't you just, why can't we just change it, make the four-by-fours for large commercial tracks, and for residential, make them like, uh, you know, the six square foot. Yeah. yeah. Just put an empty, or put, you've got a construction one, put an empty lot. If empty lots, then I understand. Put a four by four on an empty lot. And add another category or a subcategory and say construction slash empty lot. You know, if there's no construction, mm -hmm. it's a non improved parcel. Then four by four, I can understand that on a non improved parcel. But I just put somehow limit mm -hmm. that if it's improved. It's, it's easy to do it by use, like uh, the deputy mayor recommended as far as uh, making it such that if it's on a commercial tract of land or a mixed-use tract of land, mm -hmm. that it would be, uh, that you could do the 4x4 four four, up to a 4x4, four four, because that's, it is a maximum. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you have an individual residential lot like you have with, this, with the townhomes, then it would be limited to a maximum of six square feet. That, that's easy to do. Good. And it's one per parcel, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, sir. It's one per parcel. Anything else, Councilman? No, and, and again, I, I would change the campaign signs, period, in the whole district. Well, the campaign signs, Brian, um, aren't they, we have to get permits and you have to get letters of permission. And does that still apply? Or you if have we pass this, are we going to be popping 16 square foot signs out there? You, have, you would still be required to get a permit. You would still be required to have property owner permission. Uh, the only different, uh, but you would not, <coughs> as with anywhere else in town, you would not be required to get a permit for the six square foot sign, but for the 16 square foot sign, you would be required to get a permit for that. And are you saying, and I don't have an, I don't have an issue with this, but are you saying that the maximum square footage of a campaign sign could be 16 square foot in Oviedo on the park and not 32 square feet? Correct. So it makes it small. Four by four. Right. right, but you still have to get a permit. Right, well, I, I understand. I'm just saying, I, I, you know, Outside of Oviedo on the park, you can right? still do 32 square feet. Pardon, Brian? Outside of Oviedo on the part, you can still do up to 32 square feet. I don't know about No. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else, Councilman Shank? Oh. Councilman Britton. Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, with what's been presented, um, and I, but I will uh, defer to Councilman Shank if he wants to make a change. I, I just wanted to comment that it sounded a lot like uh, our building services manager when, when Mr. Cobb was given the the presentation, I think some of his old uh, characteristics were coming out. <laughs> well, those die hard. Councilwoman, do you have anything? No. You're good? I'm good with it. Deputy Mayor? Good. Does everybody agree with the changes that Councilman Schenck pr proposed? Yes. Now the lawyer is going to tell us why we have to do a reading all over again <coughs> in two weeks. But, um, Mr. Cobb, did, are you clear on the, the changes that uh, Councilman Schenck was looking at? I think if I... Why don't you just run it by us one more time? Sure. Yeah, it would be a, a change to... And a, is it just to the real estate signs? Yes. Okay. So it would be a change to the real estate signs that um, there would be one sign allowed per parcel. And on commercial or mixed-use parcels, it would have a maximum square footage of 16 square feet. On single residential-only properties, it would be a maximum of six square feet. One sign. One sign per parcel. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. And that, that was something. Uh, a permit for the six square foot one? No. no sir. They're, they're exempt. Okay. That they can put out on their own. Right. Uh, it, when you start to think about the real estate agents and having to come down and get a permit every time they list a home, yeah. that's that, right. that would be very difficult. Yeah, that's uh, right. That was something that Ms. Nix and I were sitting mm -hmm. here discussing whether or not this was a significant change that would require another public hearing. It's not, is it?
no problem. Should it be worded like that? Mm -hmm. Not significant change? Great. Yes. And yeah. if it is a significant change, then we might have an update. We shall add that wording then. Okay. Councilman Schenck, do you agree with? I do. Councilman Britton, you were the second. Do you agree? Concur. Concur? All righty. There you go. You have concurrence. Mr. Cobb, I do have one question. Yes, sir. If I may. On the special event signs, the temporary signs, the attention getting device signs, you know, we, we seem to have this glitch in our code of back to back to back to back to back to back when the intent of council <coughs> was one special event per quarter. How do we fix that? How do we fix it in our entire code and how do we fix it here? Because it looks like you, you all just carried the flawed code over to this amendment. The, the, the full uh, intention of council when we put the attention getting device ordinance together was that, you know, once per quarter a business can choose one type of attention getting event, you know, be it wavy hands, be it a balloon, be it a sign waiver, be it a banner, be it a this, be it that. And uh, the issue that we're facing in our city right now is that our permit techs are permitting all different signs, calling them something different, and we're going back to back to back to back to back which was not the intent of council. Um, <clears throat> how do we fix that here, and how do we fix it permanently in the city? Or does by a motion or a directive of the council put an end to it for the time being until you fix it? In which case, I'll bring it up later. Would you like me to call a recess for a moment? It would help, yes, sir. All right, let's take a five minute recess.
Mr. Cobb, I'm sorry. I called this back to order. Are you ready yet? We can, we can wait another minute if you need it. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Cobb, what, what have you discovered and how do we fix that glitch on both instances? Right, but then Mrs. Drago, when her 17 days are up, can come down and get an, an attention-getting device signed. Yes, it, it looks like it looks like Tuscola and Aloma. I go by there every day, and that Tuscola Aloma has seven signs lined up, and a guy sw swinging a uh, every day. So I'm like, every time I look at him, going, we can't look like this at all. Right. So I think that the steps, as far as the on page eight, where they take and grouped all of the temporary signs into one thing. Now what we need to do is bring in additional language that especially in multiple use buildings, that's going to limit that there will be only one permit issue for each 17 day period. And that's one of the things that we're going to have to come up with a specific plan to do that. So that when I've got my 17 day permit, no one else in the building can have a 17 day permit, or no one else on the property can have a 17 day But once my 17 days are done, someone else can come in. And I've used my one time before, I can't come in with another sign. Yeah, because that's, that, that becomes the problem. My, my perception was that it was like, you know, there's no free time in that model. There's no, like, blank. Okay, I got nothing going on, theoretically. There's, to me, you know, it was, you've got the, again, take Outback TJs, everybody else sitting in there and go, there's a property owner that owns the property. It, you know, just like having signage out front, it's his determination. Who gets, you know, and, and, Again, you go back to back to back to back. So you get three. I think we did for the quarters, it was like, well, you can do 17 and one, then you flip to the next quarter, and you can do 17, so you get 34 days in a row. But then you have to, my remembrance of the conversations with, but then you have to wait till the next quarter to put something up. Well, it's you, not, could, you could always just do, you can't back to back. As well, you, or you can't back to back, but, but I'm saying even with the, Again, is this per parcel or per, per business owner? Because if you do it per, per business owner, then again, you're just continuously having a sign, a banner, a swinger, a wall sign, a something that's available out there. I don't, I don't know which way is the versus. Well, if, if, I, if I can help just for a moment, if I may. It, you know, when we first did attention getting devices, um, the discussion was that other municipalities, because if you remember, we looked at specifically the Altamont code, right. only allows one 17 event per parcel. Right. It doesn't matter on the amount of 
tenants. Right, and that's what I thought. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the council decided that at that particular time that we would allow it one time per tenant for 17 days because we were trying not to be as restrictive. Now, I personally agree with you. I've lived through that. Uh, we, we've been down that road. That's the way Orange County does it. Other municipalities that I've had businesses in do it. And uh, you know, you are able to run your special events when you can, but that's that wasn't the policy decision. And I think what got misinterpreted in the translation is you may have four different types of signage and what our staff is currently doing and just based on the way it's written uh, is you know you can come down and get your attention getting device and then you get to go around and get your banner sign then you can go around and get your uh, whatever sign and you know you can just boom 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 and you know then you've got your neighbor doing the same thing and we end up looking like Tuscola and Redbuck. So I think in an effort to be as business friendly as we can and keep it as clean as we can is how we arrived at that. But again, it's all open for discussion. Mayor, one, one thing that could be done, and just listening to what you're saying, the, the language says each bona fide tenant of a premises may install other temporary signs on site for a maximum of 17 consecutive days one time for calendar quarter. We could just say take out bona fide tenant of A and just say each premises may install one temporary sign on site for a maximum of 17 days one time per calendar quarter. That way since it's based on the premises then if I have it and you come in the staff's going to say I'm sorry but you're going to have to wait till the next quarter. Well, in theory, we, you got to have the owner sign something somewhere, right? The owner has to, yes. So somewhere the owner is signing it anyway. So of course, you know, that's the fallback is well, the owner already signed for this for Dominic to have it this quarter. You know. So if, if you would, Mr. Mayor, if you have something like Jordan's Crossing, that's considered one press. Uh, that's property. a shopper center. Right. So you got five people on that, but then you go over to the uh, public shopping center with 30 uh, tenants. They still, same rule applies? Yes, sir. That, that's, that's the way the, the Altamont code was, and I'm not necessarily advocating that. I'm just, okay. I was just discussing how we got, got okay. to where we are. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I want to be that restrictive. But then the well, other what? side of it is all 30 of them could be putting out a different thing at the same time. Again, I... Well, no, no, because it would be what Mr. Cobb is saying. Currently. Is like one, right, currently. Currently. Yeah, currently. Currently, all 30 of them could put it out at the same time. And not only yeah. can they put it out at the same time, they can come down keep and back, staff will just give them a permit for a sign for an attention. Right. They'll just let them keep going. Right. That's what I'm saying. So we got to, you know, it's got to be, you got a smorgasbord of what to pick from. You know, you pick one per quarter, and it's, you know, one tenant for that 17 days doing whatever event they want to do. The other side is that, you know, Publix has bigger signage, period. They have regular, bigger, regular signage versus the other Jordan's Crossing. You know, that's, I'm just saying that's the, the trade-off is they have an outside sign that also the Jordan's Crossing doesn't have. So that Jordan Crossing or some smaller one might need or might think they need that. That's all. Is this an agenda item? Yeah. It's, I brought it up from this okay. because it was, that, it was I'm in. not really prepared to discuss this unless I go back and read the... Uh, the regulation and, and and frankly I don't I don't see a lot of this stuff I'm out out and about quite a bit but I don't I don't take notice to you live on Lockwood not on 434 if you lived off on this side of town that some of us do in travel you would see it all the time mm -hmm. and I think council will but would I agree. notice it mm -hmm. yes. well, mm -hmm. Mr. Cobb Councilman Britton brings up a very good point this became a tangent discussion of the downtown. Now, in the downtown, you're saying it's one type of sign once per quarter, and we're going to adjust it to be. Uh, pardon? No, I, I was. I was right. We'll, we'll, we'll adjust it to how we're how we're saying it. It'll be, uh, you know, once per business, 17 days. You know, you can't double them up, can't triple them up, uh, since we're we're talking about the downtown code. Right. I think as a subsection of this, if staff can prepare something 
with the supporting data that the councilman and I think the other members are looking for for our next agenda to clean up the issue that we're having, I think that might be the best way to approach this. Well, one of the things is we wouldn't be able to bring you back something on the next agenda because okay. it would be a land development code change and we would have to run it through the process that's mandated from it. Uh, of course, obviously, you can give direction for us to go make that change and just do it separate of the land development code rewrite. That's one of the things that we can do. We can put that out as the priority right now. That's what, so that's something that council could do. Right now, in this ordinance, under temporary signs, it doesn't distinguish whether it's a wall sign or if it's a uh, ground sign or if it's a free um, attention getting device. It just says a temporary sign. Uh, but it does, right now, it's based on the tenant. It says each tenant can get a sign for 17 days once per quarter. Now, the, the question is, do you wish to leave it as each tenant, or do you want to make it that the property can have one sign 17 days per quarter? I guess is my biggest question. Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. a question for another day, though. I think we need to bring it back and let's discuss it. Well, I just want to throw out, Brian, that, that was the, you know, as I was listening to all this, that, that was the key for me. And Jordan Crossings or, a, 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 you know, a strip center like that, uh, Riverside, uh, uh, out where I am on 419, if there's 20 businesses in there and they all do different things and they all use the same piece of land, how can you say that we're only going to let 17 days for the parcel when you have all these other businesses? And, and Councilman's right. This is going to take some thought. Mm -hmm. how to, you know, get to where the mayor and Councilman Shank want to go, but not tell a business, well, you can't advertise because he advertised uh, and he already used up the set. If I'm a business owner, I'm going, are you kidding me? So we have to, that, you just hit it right on the head. We have to figure that one out to make it right, mm -hmm. make it not litter up the city, which is really the goal, but I don't, I don't see how we tell multiple businesses on the same property that they can't do it. Would you be okay with? So you want to you want to let them all do it at once, create a circus, as opposed to doing a special event, which was the intent of what we did. I don't want to make it a circus. I just I, I, I don't want to have a business say, well, my you know my, my the deli over here he's advertising. Well, we're, we're not talking about citywide. Let's talk about how about in Oviedo on the park. In Oviedo on the park, it would be per business. Well, we well, need to look at that. I think Oviedo on Park is well, a same. different context because That's you're going to have smaller parcels, and it may uh, may not be. Maybe we could do it per, per parcel and not per tenant. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It'll be on the park. Right now, it's parcel. The parcels are quite large. And you could have multiple businesses within one parcel. We're going to probably end up with a the only, the only place you're going to have small parcels, the only place with small parcels is going to be in your townhomes. Uh, when you look at, if you look at your apartment, the apartments that are being constructed, they're on large parcels. Uh, parcel four takes up the majority of the southeastern corner of the property. Uh, so, I mean, it's quite large. Would, would, as, would this be a thought? And one thing, uh, Councilman, we do need to talk about it because this is the public hearing, and I want to bring you back something at the next meeting to, to fix this. So I've got to get your, I've got to get your input on it. Um, what, what, what my what, intent was, Brian, was just to stop the, the what, ha what has happened. Right. The, 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 the the staff interpreting our intent that, you know, you could have your wall sign, your attention getting device, your other sign, your this sign. You know, I think we need to cl clean that up where, you know, you pick which one you want and you get one. Right. That, that, I think if we did that, that's a step in the right direction. I think they've done that here okay. in this ordinance because it just says temporary sign. Okay. So I think that, that they've done that from that standpoint. Okay, so, so you are comfortable telling the council now that as the businesses are built in, the, in Oviedo on the park, that if it's Starbucks, when Starbucks comes down and gets a banner, that the next week our staff isn't going to be permitting a sign waiver for it until the, it, after 17 days until the next Correct. Quarter, yes. The way that's, that's written. Yes. Okay, fine. Yes. Then, then that, that's done here. Then that's good then. Yes, because we didn't break it out as far as in the sign code. You have attention getting devices as their own section, and then you also have a section on uh, commercial events, and the commercial events gets you the wall signage and the. All right. So all my intent was all the way back 25 minutes ago was to 
do what you have here citywide? Well, on the parcels. Well, that's what he's asking us for consensus on the parcel versus tenant. And I'm not sure I'm, I'm prepared to make a vote on that right now. Well, from this, what I, th what I think we can do here, if you're willing to keep it as a tenant, keep it based on the tenant, then I think what we can do is make a change such that only one tenant per 17 days. And if that's your consensus, we can bring that back to you at the next meeting. Yes. Right. And then... And it would just be one type quarter. of sign, one type of Correct. sign. Versus one tenant per quarter. Just one tenant for 17 days, and the next tenant can go. The next 17 days. So you can't yes, have sir. multiple. It's still going to have perpetual right. sales, but it's going to be different different tenants properly. Right? What do you do at the holidays when every business wants to advertise, and, and you say, well, he already has a sign. That's your big issue here, at least for me. Maybe I don't hear Could it from be. the rest of my colleagues, but for me, you got multiple businesses want to advertise for the holidays, and, and one guy got in here first, the next guy comes down and says, I'm sorry, your, your, yeah. your buddy here is putting out a sign. That ain't flying. It's for the same. Uh, i got to be honest. I survived 10 years working within <laughs> well, those rules but it's the same quite thing successfully. As, it's the same thing as the owner saying you get the biggest Outback gets this big of a signage and nobody else gets signage out front. They get the full sign and nobody else gets anything because the owner decided. The owner's got to sign this. It's his end decision that goes, it's you're the tenant that's going to get the Christmas rush. If he doesn't sign it. If he doesn't sign it, then they can't get that. The owner's got, the, the tenant owner, the, the owner of the whole parcel has to sign. That is correct? Yep. The owner has to sign it. So it, it comes down to the owner of the property who says it's going to be you versus the other guy for the holidays, which is what it is now, really. I mean, it's, it's you get the biggest sign or, or no sign. So each, what if each parcel has a different owner? Well, then they can have multiple events. Then it's that, each parcel, parcel, and it's that's by parcel. That's what used to happen at the Lane Store, because the Lane Store was a separate parcel from the uh, shopping plaza yeah. behind it. So at the Lane Store... We were able to do one event every 17 days if we wanted to. I mean, we didn't do one every 17 days but, uh, per quarter, but we could. Across the street, remember the leather gallery stores, that was in the plaza? Yeah. You know, that was first come, first serve, you know, essentially. So, so And you really you really learned how to work it out with your co-tenants. You know, you would just go check with everybody and see what, what they What about do. a place like the, the public shopping center? Does public owns its store and then someone else owns the other the other places? So you have two, two owners? No. There's one. Uh, there's well, a couple I, different tenants in there, but there's only a few different tenants. There's one. One guy owns most of that whole. The Publix on 434. I'm gonna say, but you got multiple, multiple owners in there. Which one? Which one controls? Who owns the land? Weingarten controls the plaza, and the two buildings that were recently well, built out I'm front. I'm just asking hypothetically. Right. No, I'm just telling you. Regions yeah. controls their parcel. And Usually, the banks own their own. And then the other parcel on the corner. Is a separate part. So all of them could come in and do, like, like the Riverside by you, the Riverside one by us. Two different there's, parcels. There's three different parcels. Doesn't the, I think the bank's a separate parcel. You get the bank, the subway is its own parcel, and then the public's We're is making parcel. something that's not. That I think it's a big deal. If it becomes a big deal, people. Mayor. Yes. Um, but this, this one, this one's probably going to fly the way it is. Well, well just something to think about. Um, Miss Nix and I were talking. I mean. Anytime you make a, anytime you make something more restrictive, you're coming back for another hearing. So, um, in D, on page eight of the ordinance, where it says each bona fide tenant of a premises may install other temporary signs on site for a maximum of 17 days, one time per quarter. If we change the word each to one, so that we said one bona fide tenant of a premises may install, and instead of saying other temporary signs, we said one temporary sign on site for a maximum of 17 consecutive days, one time per quarter, I think you'll accomplish what you're talking about, that each tenant gets 17 days. Now, obviously, if you have more tenants than what your 17-day periods allow within that quarter, there's going to be a tenant that doesn't get it. They'll be waiting to the next quarter. But I think with if you do, if we say, state it outright that, oops, I'm sorry, one tenant within the parcel can have a temporary sign, whether it's a wall sign or if it's a ground sign or a tension gating device. You get one, and one of you can do it for 17 days within a quarter. Yep. Well, Brian, I'll be honest. I've, I've, I don't have a problem with the multiple tenants. I mean, it's just me personally.
personally the way you have it written. My, my issue was, you know, we're going to give you uh, an attention getting device permit, and now we've interpreted it that we're going to give you a wall sign, now we've interpreted it that we're going to give you this sign, and it just became one after another. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll agree with Councilman Britton and Councilman Hankin on that one. Um, I, I think we should take a step and see, just again, it's just my opinion, uh, and the way you have this ordinance written is written that way. Uh, and then, you know, my, my whole point of bringing it up is how we would get this to the city. So that way it's just one event, not this, you know, not backing up our events. Uh, because it does become frustrating when you are in a multiple tenant plaza and, uh, you know, you may want to have an event and you got somebody else having an event, and, you know, you can't. I mean, I, I, I can understand that. Uh, I think what I'd like to see stop is um, 17 times 3, 51 days of constant stuff, you know, just because that's the interpretation. I pick one. I agree with that. So, I mean, if this ordinance is written where it's only one, I'm, I would personally be good with that. Not, I don't know about the rest of the council, but, and I'd like to see something like that later on for the city. Right, which we are, we are working on it. It, it will take a consolidation of of about three different sections into one section so that you get you can pick one of these th three types of signs but uh, what with what we have here I think I think it's covered I, I would I would say maybe we tweak it a little bit to if you want to allow multiple tenants to be able to utilize a temporary sign at the same time is that the way it's written uh, right now yes sir it does it's how it's written now uh, I would say that maybe we, instead of saying may install other temporary signs, we say each tenant may install one temporary sign. Every one every 17 days, and not coming yeah. back after one 17 every, days, something gets a new forward. device. That's what you're talking about, right? Right, because right. so what happens is they keep changing the yeah, button, and, right, and right, they're right, not right. doing anything wrong. It's just the error in the way the code yeah. is. That's a good, that's They'll a give them one bite at the apple. They get 17 days. And then that way you have multiple tenants. I mean, if we have, let's say, World of Beer wants to have a banner because they've got whatever, and then we have a wine style who wants to have an A-frame, you know, they can each have it for the 17 days to promote whatever they're promoting. Right. Back, yeah. But then they can't come back in and all of a sudden we got the sign waiver. Yeah. yeah. Correct. All right. That's good. And that's the way you have it written. I, that, with, if we propose that we, instead of saying other temporary signs, we would just say one temporary sign. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. So that way we're, we're friendly to everyone. Everyone gets a shot. I understand Councilman Shane. I would love to do that. I just, oh, I'm, I'm, it's a step. I'm taking a step. I'm happy with a step. I think we need to rein it in, so I'm good with the step. Let's just make sure. <laughs> we'll be doing another public hearing. <laughs> That's okay, though. I want Lonnie back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no worries. Uh, Brian, uh, what would you like us to do with this then right now? You want us to continue uh, this table? No, sir, it's, it's fine. Uh, just on your motion, actually, I would just say revise your motion to schedule a public hearing for November the 4th. Is it November 4th? It's our next meeting. Next okay. meeting is did the 4th. Okay. Did I do it? Go right ahead. I'm saying, did I? Uh, yes, you made the motion. So I'll accept the changes, Brian's changes, and schedule a meeting for, what day is it? Uh, November 4th. November 4th. Approximately 6.30 p.m. here in the Alveda City Council Chambers, 400 Alexandria Boulevard. Alveda, Florida, 32765. <laughs> Secondary agree? Well, I suppose. All right. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then, Brian, we've got the, that we're going to carry it through to the rest of the city, however you all do. Would you like us to put that out ahead bring it to you sooner? I have one, e yes. Either that or, or do as Lonnie has done in the past, that it's legislative intent, and then write it however you want, but just, you know, inform the staff that this is the legislative intent. We're not back you, to back to back to back. Yeah, the, the phrase you're looking for is zoning in progress. There you go, whatever. So if you'd like to give us direction that it's zoning in progress and that uh, you'd like us to bring it back quicker than the land of Elma Code Rewrite, then we can do that. Council agree? I'd love that. That's fine. Councilwoman? Good. You got it. And then when you bring it back, you am going to lay out the table so uh, Councilman Britton requested so he can see yes, what sir. it is and what it becomes. Okay. Correct? Yep. All right, moving along.
First reading of ordinances, it is ordinance number 1576, an ordinance amending sections 28-21, 28-22, 28-23, 24, and 25 on the Code of Ordinance updating impact fee schedules. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. There, this is a request for the City Council to adopt uh, revisions to the City's impact fee schedule. Uh, look, the City's Code of Ordinances requires that every five years that we conduct a uh, technical study. And then that technical study gives us a recommendation of what is the maximum fee that we may charge uh, for, uh, for impact fees. And this, the, imp the technical study covers the impact fees for transportation, for law enforcement, for fire, and uh, recreation and parks, and for administrative facilities. Uh, the city had contracted with Tyndale Oliver and Associates to prepare the technical study. The technical study has been completed. The, um, the different impact fee schedules have been updated. Uh, most of the impact fees actually reduced. Uh, there were a few that increased, but most of them actually reduced with the new data that was provided in the technical study. Uh, tonight, you are asked to read the ordinance by title only and to schedule a public hearing for November the 4th, 2013. Uh, Mr. T Mr. Ten, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Tendell and Mrs. Camp, who are the leads at Tendell Opter, are here tonight to address any questions you may have. They will be making a presentation at your public hearing on November the 4th. Also, Ms. Fruitt and Ms. Pierre are here too. They were part of the staff that uh, assisted Tendell Oliver in preparing the uh, technical report. Uh, so with that, Mayor, uh, we recommend that you read the, read the ordinance by title only and schedule a public hearing for November 4th, 2013. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Ms. Nitz, can you read ordinance number 1576 by title only, please? Thank you. This time I'd like to entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing for ordinance number 1576 on Monday, November 4th, 2013 at approximately 6.30 p.m. here in the Oviedo City Council Chambers at Oviedo City Hall, 400 Alexandria Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they came from everywhere. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try to figure it out. Thank you, Ms. Cindy. All right. Deputy Mayor, do you have any questions? Nope. You're good? Councilwoman? Nope. Councilman? No, sir. De Councilman Britton? Good. All righty. I do well, like, though, that, that Brian pointed out, that big chart you gave me like a month ago when you guys did all the work, a lot of them went down, we're in line, the business community's going to be happy, and it's all good. So that I like. Good job on that. All righty. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to schedule the public hearing on ordinance number 1576 for November 4th, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, guys. Sorry you came down. And... Hopefully we have to. All righty. Resolutions. We have none. Discussion items. We have architect update on the design of the proposed new fire station. Mr. Cobb, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request for City Council to receive a project design update on the proposed new fire station from the City's architect, Starmer Design Group, and provide input for moving forward with the design. Uh, Chief White and Mr. Starmer are here. They're going to give you a quick presentation and then uh, solicit your input regarding the design of the new fire station. Thank you, City Manager Brian Cobb. <laughs> I had to say that once. <laughs> Could you pull up? Thank you. So, Assistant City Manager Lawrence, how are you? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> There's something wrong. With you. We'll step through this rather quickly tonight. Um, just gave you a brief update. We began FDOT negotiations January 2012. Council workshop on the superstation design May 2012. Uh, consensus received there. May 20, uh, 
2013, Council approved the sale of right-of-way space with FDOT for $1.6 million, which we have received. Uh, Council also approved the two lease agreements. We're leasing uh, the Memorial Building and Fire Station 44 for $0, set to expire December 2015. Uh, July 2013, Council approved the bid award for design and engineering services to Starmer Design Group, and we've been actively working on this project ever since. Uh, we have just completed the geotechnical survey and the site uh, survey as well. And um, fire station design and site plan scope of work is complete tonight for your review and direction. So we're going to step through a couple of things. What we're seeking tonight is that council perhaps would give us some direction on the architectural design features of the building. Um, and I dare say on some on-site signage, if you so choose, <laughs> and future reuse of some of the existing uh, decommissioned water plant buildings. So if we'd step up to the next slide, please. Council, we have a kind of a critical need in our city for storage space. We're significantly lacking that opportunity. In fact, we use some rental buildings around town for that purpose. So we, as we looked at this site, we saw an opportunity. It's not uncommon for water tanks to be repurposed and reused, and we see an opportunity here. So our goal at the present time is to maintain those two properties, those two water tanks are dry at this time. They're decommissioned. Uh, we'd cut some doors in the side, whether they're roll-up doors or double-access doors, something of that nature. Uh, the construction type is very conducive to high winds because of the cervical design. These are poured concrete structures. They held a lot of water at nine pounds per gallon. You, you get the picture of how secure they are. They're, yes, they could be. <laughs> it would take a little work. Uh, we'd have to do something with the aerator device on the top. We could encapsulate it or remove it and put a dome cap over the top. So structurally, besides the doors, we'd need a structural permit, electrical permits, and that pretty much would probably be all that's required of it at this time. Yes. Well, let me step through just a few slides, and then okay. perhaps we'll come back and, and you can weigh in on the others, because the next one kind of complements this one as well. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Next slide, please. This is the Oviedo's first water plant. As, as you recall, uh, we tried to dress it up a little bit of what it may look like. It's about seven. You like the stone? Okay. <laughs> it's roughly about 1,700 square feet. Uh, it is another hardened structure. It's probably, we guess, rated for probably around 180 mile per hour winds. It's poured concrete, extremely strong. Uh, the water plant employees love to staff that building when the storms are coming because of its strength and integrity. And our strategic plan is a goal to uh, eventually build an emergency operations center. So move it from, move it from the, the room that we have here, which is really a conference room is what that is. It's extremely cramped and crowded. We can't even bring all our staff into it uh, for our briefings and so forth. This would also double as a training center. The HR department could use it um, because of its location to the new proposed fire station, there's some amenities that we can share with the fire station that we won't need to replicate in the EOC, such as the kitchen and some of those things in the fire station. So it's another opportunity to repurpose a building. Um, same thing. Now, this one will take a little bit more work. We're proposing over the course of the next year to go out and get some estimates on the two storage tanks and perhaps what it would take to convert this building. This building does have a functional uh, emergency power generator in it. It's still functioning for several of the wells that are on the site, so it needs to remain in service. So we think a renovation of this property will be a little further down the road than perhaps the tanks. Both of these properties, the tanks and the EO, proposed EOC, is not part of the fire station project. This is just something we're kind of identifying that we would like to use in the future for these, these buildings here. The steel structure that you see there was used to offload chlorine tanks. That, that will be removed as well. So, Mayor, if you want to have a quick discussion on the repurpose and reuse of those, those facilities, then we'll move on to the next. Thank you, Chief. Council, have any objections to what Chief White's proposing? Not at all. No, and I, I don't know. Mars, are you familiar with what Altamont's done with their uh, water tanks? Uh, I haven't seen it myself, but I am familiar with it. I think it. their data center and their 
their emergency operations center our converted water tank. So you might want to contact them. And we'll do that. We'll do that. Love the chief. Go for and it. Councilman Shank, I'm sorry. Good. Good. Nope. Nope. It's probably one of the first opportunities we've had to repurpose some existing buildings, so we're kind of excited about it. It will. It will. Next slide. Yeah, I think we'll skip that one. No, we better stay there. <laughs> go back. Go back. Go back. No, go back. Where do you want to put the sign? Go. Well, um, it probably would be at the park entrance. It's really not needed for the fire station. We don't need an electronic sign or anything. It's just this site has presented an opportunity. And we want to stub it out now for electric and, and those type of things if, in fact, we're going to do this. Um, I just threw a few pictures up there. You, of course, have the gateway sign that you're more familiar with. Um, the signs depicted below have uh, been utilized in a lot of areas in, in the uh, Seminole County area, City of Sanford has a similar type device. They range anywhere from twelve to twenty thousand dollars is what I've cost out. But really, for tonight, all we're looking for is: Are you interested in electronic signage? If so, we just need to incorporate it into the site plan. Council, Lars, you said we really don't need it. The fire station doesn't need it. We're, we don't. I mean, we may advertise an October fire prevention month or something. Mm -hmm. The fire station itself will have its name on the station. This sign really presents other opportunities for you. I, I wouldn't see a lot of fire department messages on the scrolling board or something. So this is, is going to be on, on 434. It's, and then we don't really have any other uh, gateway or marquee on, on that, that boulevard. I think we have right-of-way issues, if I remember. Isn't, isn't that what stopped us, Brian, from doing the other gateway signs? Wasn't it right-of-way issues at the entrance, the entrances to the city? There was a few, few right-of-ways, yeah. and some of it was also funding as well. Yeah. We checked uh, with that. There, there are, this park does already have signage. Yeah, Boston Hill has signage. Boston yeah. Hill does have signage. I mean, this would be a replacement of that signage. Uh, my only concern, Chief, mm -hmm. is that I would make the sign consistent with our code. You know, the, the oh yes. You know, the the LED looks bigger. I mean, we only allow 20% LED right on on a sign, and we can't you know do as we say, not as we do. Yeah, really, these uh, these graphics tonight were just to kind of show you a few things. We didn't get into any measurements or anything. We really kind of scrambled the last two weeks to throw this portion. I would out. say is wait till we. Uh, Decide some of the, like the things inside where we decide our signage and what we're like looking for in the, the logo, et cetera. And we decide mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. We could we could include on the site plan the location, correct, Bill? At least we could do that. The important thing here is if we want to stub out electricity and those type of features, now's the time to kind of make that decision. Okay. Yeah. I think so. there would be consensus to stub out. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. Well, like it, okay. All right. Or at least run the, the pipe. I mean, you know, the we'll get the conduit in the, the ground. The conduit, <laughs> you know, put the wire in it. We'll, we'll get we the conduit always, in the ground. We group. could always bring you a deviation request for the size of the electronic copy. Yes, I'm sure you can. <laughs> as well as color, too. <laughs> you never miss the copy. You used to be our city manager. <laughs> I, we just want to make sure. <laughs> we just want to make sure you knew that existed. Actually, out at the East Station 48, you have that availability as well if you ever want to do something there. Okay, we'll go to the site plan real quick. Uh, I'm going to bring Bill up in just a second here. Council, this site was very complex. There is just no question about it. Um, however, I think uh, Bill and all of us have done a great job with what we've had. We knew early on that it would be expensive moving park elements around, so we tried to keep them existing and in their same location. Uh, we have, as you know, a depressional area that we've had to work around. Geotechnical survey came back favorable for development, but uh, Bill has carefully uh, placed only the parking that would be anywhere near or over top of that pond. We've had to relocate, uh, it's about 30 spaces, maybe 35 existing parking spaces to the back of the property, and Bill carefully uh, included some expansion opportunities as well for basketball or whatever else may, may fit in there. We also had some well setbacks that we had to adhere to. And of course, trying to repurpose uh, the two water tanks and the 
potential uh, EOC building. You can see that at the bend there in the driveway, there's one little chemical building that we need to take down. It's not a facility we'd want to repurpose or reuse anyways. It's all of 400 square feet. It's difficult to see on there, but that, that property needs to go, and it's quite an eyesore anyways. Uh, so with this, I would like to bring our architect, Bill Starmer, up, and he's going to walk you through the rest of the presentation. Good evening, Bill. Thanks for hanging in with us. Good evening. Thank you, Assistant City Manager White. <laughs> <laughs> See, if we keep saying it enough, you can retire as the fire chief, no problem. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Bill Starmer. I'm president of Starmer Design Group, Planning and Architecture, Inc. Our uh, international headquarters office is at 101 South Central Avenue, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. We have set up a rather um, seasoned building committee. The chief was put together with, with fire and rescue personnel. We've met on four or five different occasions. We've gone through the original program for the fire station. Uh, we've come up with a couple of different concept designs. If we go to the next slide, you look at the floor plan. Uh, this is basically just under 14,000 square feet. I think we currently have it at 13,007. We started out with a goal of about 12, 12,500. But in looking at the future and looking at the needs of the city today, uh, making sure we have adequate space not only for apparatus but personnel as well, we're creeping up a little bit in square footage, but I think we have a pretty good handle on it. It's a five-bay fire station. It's a drive-through. You can see the apparatus there. We're actually showing a ladder truck. You don't currently have one, but we're, again, planning that for the future. Uh, on the right-hand side of the station, there are support spaces, basically storage, some <clears throat> necessary gear storage, medical storage, cascade, oxygen, etc. On the left-hand side, the first floor is primarily the uh, living space, kitchen, dining, day room. We also have some offices there uh, with some training and uh, uh, reports writing area. And then the second floor is strictly a bunk room. We've chosen to go with individual rooms, which is really a little bit nicer living environment for the uh, staff. And so it works out fairly well. You can see on the previous slide where the, it fits on the site. We've, we're looking at a couple of different exterior elevations. What you have in front of you is you have brick, you have stone. Uh, we started with brick and we have a blue awning and eyebrows, which are sunshades for the building. We also, uh, going down the uh, design process a little bit, you see the stone in your handout uh, in, in brick and stone in a blue roof. And then we also changed it to have a red roof, which uh, the chief felt the commission might like to see since it's a fire station and red has a tendency to, to say a message for fire and rescue a little bit louder. I think really... Um, our message to you this evening is we think we have a good handle on the floor plan. Uh, Budget-wise, we're really preliminary, but I think we're running a little, a little bit over. I was going to say probably about 10% high. I think we can get that number down just on the choice of materials uh, and maybe some shared costs on how we make the improvements with the parks and, and the parking area. And you're going to save a little bit of money on the demolition of those buildings if you repurpose them. So I think the overall city budget, we can get this uh, project to work. So we're kind of looking at a confirmation of size. It's a two-story living space. It's a five-bay apparatus. And then I think the chief is also looking for uh, your interest in whether it's brick or whether it's stone. Both are traditional materials. Um, 
both have history in the city. I think that uh, if you talk to 20 people on the street, you probably get 25 different opinions. But basically, some people think brick is a little bit more traditional and they'll lean that way. Others will pick the stone. I would just caution you that if you do go stone, let's use a stone that is Florida traditional. Let's not be trendy so that five years down the road we're sorry and it looks like every residential subdivision in our city. So that's our story and we're sticking to it. Look forward to your thoughts. Let's start with <laughs> Councilwoman. Any questions? <laughs> Let's start at the other end. <laughs> Councilman Britton, any questions? Let's start at the other end. Uh, yeah. No, I don't have any questions. I, I think I prefer the more traditional uh, rendering versus the, the, uh, the gray stone uh, rendering. I, I'd kind of like to see consistency between what we've got for all our fire departments. So and carry that tradition on. But I'm not that much into... Uh, Aesthetics are more functional. Okay. Deputy Mayor. Well, I think with this design, you have functional and aesthetics. I like the brick. I like the red awnings, you know, fire, red. Um, I, I, it's, it's just going to be an awesome facility. I mean, I like what I, I like this picture. Everybody see what I'm thinking? This one right here with the bricks and yeah. the red awnings. That's, that's, what I like. that's my, that'd be my preference, Chief, but it's up to you. It's up to you, it's your boys, but I like the red, so that looks good. Councilwoman, <laughs> can I come to you now? You can come to okay. me. Okay. Uh, well, it, it is beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful design. Um, for the outside, I do like the brick also. The red the red brick, that's what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. And I the think red that's beautiful. Is what yes, I think that's beautiful. Um, I guess I'm just struggling a little bit with, uh, <laughs> it looks like a mansion on the inside <laughs> for me, um, such as the covered patio with a grill. Um, and what is it, what's the training tower? Is, the training tower on the uh, back side of the building is going to be a facility exactly for that. It's a training tower. It's an empty shell. We're not air conditioning it. There's no windows or doors in it. And it'll have a series of stairs and platforms, and it's really a training mechanism to get personnel used to climbing out of different size openings, climbing in to different size openings, and even rappelling. We're going to have a hole in the roof so that they can practice entering a building through the roof or leaving a mm -hmm. building through the roof. So, so you do in-service training. You're going to be doing in-service training there. Yeah, and that's one of the things we lacked since we separated with the Central Florida Fire Academy was mm -hmm. training facilities. We just went through an ISO reaccreditation process and waiting on that outcome. One of the things we got gigged on was the loss of the training facility. They don't give you points anymore for just going out in the parking lot and conducting training. Mm -hmm. You have to do it in an established building. So this just And, and, and you'll bring um, the firefighters from the other station. They will come over here for training, too. Oh, yes. You know, that will utilize that. Uh, um, you know, I just noticed there's a lounge upstairs. There's a day room downstairs, a huge kitchen. Um, I guess I'm just struggling with that because we're um, spending a lot of money. Uh, this is a work place, and uh, I guess I need to think about it a little bit more. Well, you're certainly welcome to do that, and we appreciate your comments. I think you've got to understand that these are uh, 11 overgrown kids who are living in this facility. They need a little bit of space, not only just to, to cohabitate, but to, to do their work. And I think when you talk about spending money, you're really being very frugal. This uh, building, the per square foot cost, is really down below 180. So I think so far, you know, the team has done a good job of keeping the I do understand budget. that, and, and de we definitely want the employees to be um, comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not 
even sure that that's it, Lars. I guess that, um, you know, we have a study upstairs. We've got a lounge. Uh, I just look at, like, City Hall here. We, we don't have those amenities for other employees. Um, yes, they have a kitchen, you know, a small little kitchen, and they share. I just feel that it's a little, um, a little much. That's all. I think we're spending, we've got to be careful with the money we spent, as Councilman Shank said before, um, being very vigilant with what we're spending and how we're, uh, how big we're, we're going. I think it's a beautiful plan. I think the outside is beautiful. I don't, uh, I guess that's what I'm struggling with. I'm struggling with, with all that space um, when. Mr. Starmer or Lars, is there some sort of design standard for square foot per number of person that occupies the space that, that you go by? Or? There are, and there's many different standards. I think that uh, size-wise for an 11-man station, this is actually fairly small. And we've designed it for the capacity of 13. Um, and just one more thing, and really not to be defensive, but that second floor where you see study and you see lounge, you know, maybe those... Uh, words semantically are a little bit glamorous. These guys and gals are multitasking. Uh, they're continually improving their education. You know, they need a spot to sit down at a computer. Upstairs, you know, many of the events that, go, that they go through during the day are fairly traumatic. Sometimes they just don't sleep. They've got to get up if they have a spot to read a book and relax and unwind and get back into the groove. It's beneficial to them. So that's kind of why you see those spaces coming up upstairs. I guess I just think, you know, I, I look at the police department and, and they require a lot of training also um, and they don't have that luxury to be inside of a building. They're in a car all day, um, but they don't have a place to go back to. Um, and I think we need to treat all employees equally, but I realize we're just talking about the fire station now, so um, I just, I, I'm just struggling with a few of the issues. Points well here. taken. I guess I'm done. <laughs> Councilor Chang? Uh, I, too, like the brick, and I really like the uh, the cover. I think that's phenomenal. It's, uh, looks, looks Brian, it reminds me of the what I designed for the amphitheater back, to be honest with you. <laughs> the front of They're going to make it out of sails. Just exactly. No, no, this is, if you look at the front, I've done a design. It's it, it, it very similar. It had a nice curve to it like that. I, I really think that's a phenomenal design, and the brick front is a, it's traditional, but it really has a contemporary flair to it with the uh, with the top that's above that. Um, I, I really like the design, and, and I it shows you guys if I, I really do understand what the councilwoman's saying. But I, I, you know, trying to look at and think of both 48 when they built that, and look at both fire stations and go, you know, it is a concern. The, the design space is uh, utilized very well. It's a compact space that has a lot in it, but I, I, I do understand what the councilwoman's saying. Um, but I see you guys did um, work very uh, excruciatingly to, to compact that down and keep the size um, as small but as usable as possible. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, it's very, very nice, Bill. I really appreciate the design. Good. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Bill, I got a couple of questions. I thought this was going way too easy. Ah, no worries. Brick and red is fine. I like it. Let's just keep it traditional. Let's, you know, as everyone has said, we'll keep our buildings consistent. Um, how big are our current fire stations, Chief? Uh, about six thousand Right, I mean, when I, when I add this up, I see we have living space of 6,400, so then that's for two companies. Two stations. All right, so the space is about the same. Right. Living space is what we have. Um, once this is built, 
Mr. Cobb, the plan is to start a redesign of the public safety building entirely for the police department, I believe, correct? I believe we, the early discussions were the police department and the wellness center. Those are the early discussions, but police department is primary, yes. Right, and we'll be able to use, because if I remember, those bays can have the second floor put in. I remember. That would be close to about 9 or 10,000 square feet by adding the second floor of the truck bays. Right, and I seem to remember being told years back that that's the way the bays were designed to accommodate a second floor if we ever divided them up. Yes. Okay. Um, the clock. The clock looks like it's going to be a, a nightmare to take care of over time. What is your, your experience with these things? I mean, it's a nice feature. It's, it, it's cool. I just, you know, we could put a fire symbol up there just as simple, and then we don't have a maintenance issue. <clears throat> Unless it's really a design feature. Well, I think James and Drew would agree with you. They're, they're pulling for that clock to disappear. But... Uh, there's no question, it is, and it's just uh, it's another element for the city. What do you want to say to the community? Okay. You know, if it's a, if it's a clock there, you're going to have a mechanical mechanism that you've got to keep tabs on. You know, they're getting better these days, but still, you're going to spend probably somewhere between five and seven grand for that clock. I'm not sure what the maintenance will be on it. Versus just a fixed symbol, whether it's a city logo whether it's fire rescue logo, then the maintenance there is just, you know, cleaning it. It's not the operation of it. I, I don't have an opinion either way. I'll let mm -hmm. chief decide and staff decide on clock or no clock. I just was a concern, you know, that we might have this ongoing maintenance and then the thing is stuck on 3 o'clock, you know, for till the next budget year when we can afford to fix it. So um, it was just an issue. The site plan, Bill. Mm -hmm. that, that's got me concerned uh, only because eventually, you know, the state's starting the PD&E study to widen up 434 in the 2017 budget year. Uh, now, you know, chances of that road being widened any time in our lifetimes of sitting here is probably slim, but it is something that the municipality is going to have to deal with in the future. When I look at your right-of-way line and what's going to be lost. I mean, does that building have to go back another 20 or 30 feet? I mean, what accommodate? We, we don't want to put the councils in the future right back where we are now. No. And, and you've got a 22, 22 spots there for parking for 11 people. I mean, you just move it back if you can't move it into the, the hole, so to speak. No, and then you're very perceptive. What you're looking at here is a diagrammatic site plan. It's a scale drawing put on an aerial. We just now received the survey, and so we will put the building on the site with dimensional accuracy. And we also have the proposed PD&E study showing where that right away will be. We'll make sure we're well behind that, still giving us plenty of room for a front apron, you know, so that you can work on the vehicles in front of the station long before you hit that right away. So this is just kind of a holding place, saying that, you know, this is how we see the site being developed. Okay. Um, and there's no question we need to pay attention to that, and we will. All right. It just, like I said, if we're going to build it, it looks like, we're going to spend yeah. the money, it's something... Yeah. That's going to be there for, you know, hopefully 30, 40, 50 years. Who knows? You know, let's just build it so we don't have to knock it down again. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Well, then, Bill, you've answered all my questions, and uh, uh, great job. Thank you for your time. Uh, just before you disappear, anything else from the council? I do like the parking in the back, by the way. It was by um, kids play basketball. It's actually very nice to have the parking back there by the basketball courts. That's, a, that's an actually a good feature. And, and Drew's been a part of yeah. our meetings, and, you know, we were a little bit nervous about taking some of his parking, but he's actually happy with that back yeah. there. And then the opportunity to someday in the future add additional okay. no, that's, activities. That really is great. Just have to run, you know, that whole length now to get there. It's, it's great. Excellent. Thanks again for your time. Lars, is there a plan to move the horseshoe pit closer to the station? Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, gentlemen. Chief, did we give you everything you need? I just lost the union. You did? Yeah. Okay, good. All righty, let's move on to reports. Mr. Cobb. No report here. All right. <laughs> this next.
Awesome. Councilman Britton. A couple things. I'll let uh, the mayor talk about the Iron Heart event uh, that we went to the other night. It was a great time. Uh, I did attend the League of Cities uh, committee meetings on Friday over at the, um, the Marriott World Center, and I, I put a letter in your each of your boxes, or had staff do that, regarding sober homes uh, um, for us to consider whether we want to uh, send this letter uh, in that will be presented to, to Governor Scott or maybe a, a resolution in, in support of regulating these, uh, these sober homes, which are basically being uh, set up uh, under the guise of the ADA Act uh, uh, in an effort to get around uh, boarding house uh, regulations, uh, which which is quite a concern for, for me and I'm sure you all. Is the league taking that, Councilor? Uh, the league is going to take this up. Uh, this this was a side uh, sidebar that they brought to my committee. Uh, it's not under my committee's purview, but they, they brought it up. Uh, it's being looked at uh, very similarly to the pain pain clinics issue in that the companies that are coming in to set these up are, are uh, pressuring the legislature to let them self-regulate like the pain clinic, clinics did but there's already issues uh, regarding uh, you know ignoring the the rules and, and abuses of, uh, of the uh, ADA Act as well as insurance fraud so it's kind of concerning I'd rather ask it in front of it I'm not asking you for you to do anything, just uh, to look at it and, and be aware of it. Uh, but it's it's coming down the line, just like the uh, pain clinics, uh, yeah, pain clinics did. And I want to. Is there going to be a resolution that you're going to bring to us eventually? I will. Yeah, I will. Or if, if you feel like it, you can sign this and send it to, or give it to me, and I'll send it over to the, the gentleman that that was collecting these to bring to the governor's office to make him aware of what's what's going on. And the only other two things I had was the uh, Duke Energy uh, Savings Program. We met at uh, at the uh, Jackson Heights Middle School. We had what I'd say about 50 people there, Mayor. Oh, at least, yeah. 50 well people attended. signed up for a, for a review of their homes and and some uh, free uh, energy efficiency updates. So that was a great program. I missed out on the food, but I guess it was pretty good. They they fed them too. And also thanks to uh, Principal Bailey for. Uh, making his facility available for that meeting and the only other thing i have is say how about them nights <laughs> 21. Mm -hmm. so. do we have any fsu fans out there <laughs> they're the only other ones that are happy and not, to not the wrong at number two got to hand it to you miami number seven was it eight no, very proud of the nights they played well the other night and uh, really showed us uh, did us proud game on saturday we've got to see everybody out there Noon, Yukon. Mayor, one thing just to echo what Councilman Britton was saying about these homes. Um, big concern is that they will, the legislature will pass legislation that will exempt them from local zoning laws. And uh, that that is a big deal because then they will start to place them inside of our single family neighborhoods. Uh, we have a few types of homes like that, they call community homes now. Fortunately, those are primarily focused toward children, and so it's not as big of an impact on a neighborhood, but a home like the councilman is describing could have a huge impact on a neighborhood, and so it's something that we do need to need to monitor and, and express our thoughts. Councilman, if you have a resolution that you can get to Mr. Cobb. I will, uh, I will get that to us. Anything else, sir? That's it. Uh, my report, just one item. Iron Heart Ball was Friday night with our Oviedo ER Partners, Central Florida Regional. Uh, Councilman Britton, myself, Mr. Cobb. Um, who else do we have at our table? Patrick, Patrick Kelly Patrick was at our table. Livingston. Janet Livingston, the Executive Director over at Oviedo ER, was at our table. It was a great event. It was extremely well attended this year. And Central Florida Regional raised over $20,000 that night for the American Heart Association. So uh, it was just an absolutely fantastic event. Um, also, speaking of Oviedo ER, I d did send an email out. I know uh, some of us have been contacted. They've asked us to pencil in November 15th, 9 a.m. for the ribbon cutting. Uh, Sandy McPherson did tell us the other evening at, a, at an event that the councilwoman and I were at that I think that they've kind of really starting to gel around that, the 15th. Mm -hmm. So uh, might want to just put it down on your calendar. They're looking at doing uh, ribbon cutting on the 15th. Uh, opening 
the ER up for the public on the 16th to come in, preview it, and starting to accept patients on the 18th, which would be Monday. Uh, seems to be the plan right now. So we're getting very, very close. I was out on the, the property today, and uh, it's really, Chief, it's really taking shape now. So uh, it's very exciting, not only for Oviedo, but Eastern Seminole County. So with that being said, end of my report, Councilman Schenck. Also on Friday, uh, the mayor and I were at the Haggerty Homecoming Parade. Oh. Councilman Shank had a blast because he had the confetti machine to himself. Yes. Bio <laughs> biodegradable confetti. Biodegradable confetti machine. Uh, Parks and Rec did another great job. There were compliments galore for our float uh, from everybody. And we did have the confetti machine, and the wind worked in our favor, so it was shooting on kids and all over people, and uh, they had a great time. And we rolled this year, they rolled us in on the uh, field. They had instead of the kids. Um, standing along the roadway, they put them in the grandstands. So we went inside and rolled cool. around there and then we shot confetti up on them there mm. too. Um, they had a lot of good floats. The Caroline did another great job. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It, it seemed like it was very big this year. It seemed very big. It seemed like a little bit bigger this year for some reason. And the Oviedo homecoming for I'm sorry, I'm going to step on you. That's coming up too in I think three weeks, two and a half November weeks. November something? November 7th is it? 7th, yeah, that Friday. Did you get something? They sent us about a little while ago. They just a quick hey, this is the date. But, um, I think it's the seventh. The right? seventh, I thought it is. Yeah. At about four o'clock, as usual. And then uh, this Saturday, there's a run in Oviedo, uh, the Rising Run. Uh, see the mayor. We'll get to. Uh, Steen, he won't be running. Steen Nelson. Running. Steen Nelson. Uh, get a little history and a run in on Saturday morning. That's it. I'm gonna go to the football game with my beard on. I, uh, I signed up. You're running? Yeah. I'm, I'm playing in character. You're going to be racing Ethan. Uh, no, I'm not. Deputy Mayor Hankin. Kind of reminds me of that commercial with the mayor. I certainly ain't jogging. You know, that, <laughs> that Dish Network commercial? Yeah. Um, just one quick thing. Brian, congratulations on the swearing in. It's nice to see that interim thing gone. Um, it's nice to see your uh, beautiful family out here tonight. So long and many years stabilize it. You already have. So, uh, you know, I don't want to see any more city managers here. I got the one we want, and uh, we're all proud of you. You're doing a great job. Your staff loves you, and uh, just uh, soak it all in. Keep working hard, and we're going to get somewhere special. So just want to congratulate you. Good job. Yeah, we're not doing any more searches. So Yeah, we're done. We're done. That. We're done. That's <laughs> it. You can't go anywhere. That's all I got, man. There you got. Uh, Councilwoman. Well... Well, you guys were at the parade, enjoying that. I went and golfed at the Christmas bike program we fundraiser covered all on the bases. Friday. We, were, we, we were did, all yes, yes, and and I was exhausted. It was hot, and I'm not a very good golfer, <laughs> but I did it. But did and you have fun? I did have fun. It, it was a good time, and I think they've raised a lot of money for for the children's bicycles. And then if, on, if I may, I, and, I, and I'm terribly you sorry, step it all over. Yeah, today. I am. You know why? Because I was told I ran into Tom Arthur yesterday at um, the Winter Springs Art Fest, which was very well attended. He mentioned to me that Carl Black this year wrote them a check for $7,500. $7,500. Yep. So, uh, that was pretty that, amazing. That's incredible. Yep. That really is. I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, and Saturday, I attended, and so did the mayor and his wife, a fundraiser for Helpful Hands, which is located right here in Oviedo. And that was a very nice event. I think everyone had a good time. <laughs> um, we'll leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> uh, last week I attended the Tri-County League of Cities um, meeting, and we had the installation, and Joe Durso, Commissioner Durso, is now the president for Tri-County League of City. I was voted in uh, for as a board member again for the next two years. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Senator Simmons was there talking about a bill that he is putting together for septic tanks. I'm sure you've all heard him talk about the septic tank issue. So he's looking for any comments, suggestions. He says call him, come and see him, or send him anything. He, um, he, he's very passionate about it. Um, let's see, what else do we have? 
Uh, last week, I was asked to speak at the Historical Society. That was very interesting. Um, and Chief White was there, and, and it, it was a fun time. There was uh, Penny, I mean, um, Mayor Olive was there to talk about how it was in 1977. And I was there to talk about it as 2013. And Lars filled in everything in between. <laughs> so it was a fun time. Um, I wanted to bring up the holiday tree lighting. Is that, is that, can we announce that, Lars? Um, the holiday hometown tree lighting is going to be on Saturday, December 6th, which is a fun, fun time. And, of course, we have great day on November 9th. Um, that's also a great time. And I think that's all I have. Chief, can we get like an 80-footer this year? 80-foot tree. He wants an 80-foot tree. Not, not a hook and ladder, a, a tree. Yeah, not a, not a, not a ladder. Maybe like a, like a, maybe a 30-foot, you know, hmm? you know. See what you can do about that. Seven. Oh. That's what I'm saying. You know, I see it like truck down Mitchell Hammock like they do with the Rockefeller Center tree. Try and see if we can get a bigger tree. On that note. You're right. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I made a mistake. It's Saturday, December 7th. Yes. Thank you, Councilman Schenk. Yeah, 5, 5.30-ish. Okay. All righty, future meeting dates. This Monday, next Monday, the 28th, we have a work session, 5.30 p.m. Then we have regular sessions on the 4th of November, 18th of November, 2nd of December. And on the 2nd of December, we also have our... CRA governing meeting, and Brian, I believe that's the only meeting in December, correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. And then our next meeting will be, well, it gets all It'll mixed be in up there in January. Yes, sir. We'll just say January. With that all being said, uh, is uh, we ran late tonight. I do apologize. It's 10 minutes to 9. Meeting is adjourned.